Recruiting never stops, especially for Georgia football. Welcome to the podcast that covers Georgia football recruiting from all angles and spotlights the legends of tomorrow. It's the Recruiting Bulldog Update, the RBU Podcast. Hand off to Chubb. Chubb at right tackle, breaks one stat, breaks another one. Now he's in the open, 40, 30, near sideline. Jump, 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 touchdown! We go wild dog with Sony. Nauta goes in motion left, snap it to Michelle. He's running to the left, angling, 25, 20. Got a block for Brock, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Dogs win it, we're headed to Atlanta. Shotgun, give it to Fromm. He's going to hand it off to Swift. Swift's got running room. Swift by the defense, 40, 30. They will get him. Go, Swift, into the end zone. Touchdown. The freshman just ran it back to Philadelphia. We hand it off to Herschel. There's a hole. Five. 10, 12, he's running over people. Oh, you Herschel Walker. Gurley, five yards deep, but Todd will bring this one out. And there he goes. One block, and it might be over. Todd Gurley, coast to coast. Can he make it? Yes, he can. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Recruiting Bulldog Update, also known as the RBU Podcast. So exciting to be bringing you episode two of the RBU Podcast and was very, very thankful and pleased for the response to episode one. We well surpassed a 1,000 views uh, on YouTube and picked up subscribers on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can catch up here uh, on all the latest news and events and analysis centering around Georgia football recruiting each and every Monday. New episodes coming out. Get it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and also Spotify. And, of course, over on the Bulldog Illustrated YouTube channel. So thankful for Bulldog Illustrated for providing the the platform and the support to get this thing going. Last week, we focused on why the quarterback room containing Brock Vandegrift and Gunnar Stockton uh, in the future will be different than that in the past of Jake Fromm and Justin Fields and that whole saga that went on this week. We're still, like I said, every week, this podcast is the only podcast is going to center solely on Georgia football recruiting and the different dynamics of it. This week, we're going to focus on the dynamic of being a high school head coach that is getting, that has power five prospects on your roster and many and has had many throughout the years. Um, Who better to give insight on that than a head coach that has had multiple national recruits and three that have ended up at the University of Georgia in Jake Fromm, Trey Hill, and Amarius Mims most recently, and that is Vaughn Lassiter. Lassiter was the head coach at Houston County when Jake Fromm and Trey Hill attended there, and then, of course, Amarius Mims at Blakely County. Alabama, Clemson, Auburn, Georgia – all heavily involved in these various recruitments through all these high-profile experiences. Uh, Von Laster got to see up close and personal how these programs operate, uh, how the coaches and support staffs interact not only with the recruits but their families and them as as high school and him as a high school coach. Amarius Mims was the most recent, and then of course the most high-profile of any of those prospects. And we were very, very fortunate this week to catch up with Von Lasser to discuss his perspective of these recruitments and the approaches that all the different schools involved had. And he also shared and gave some great insight on how the University of Georgia goes about their business, why they're so successful in recruiting. And uh, we have some clips here that we're going to share with you. And we'll get to those here in just a second, uh, right after this message that I want to bring to you promoting Bulldog Illustrated. I write for Bulldog Illustrated each and every day over at bulldogillustrated.com. That's B-U-L-L-D-A-W-G illustrated.com. And up at the top link, you can catch on the uh, daily dog thread, the DDT. Um, There's a great community of Georgia Bulldog fans uh, people who are just interested in, in seeing what's going on. It's all the website's all managed by Greg Poole, who's the media director. Also takes great pictures at events like Georgia basketball games, baseball games, tennis, anything that's going on. Greg Poole uh, can hook up with some uh, great pictures, and those are over there on the website as well. You can go to BulldogIllustratedPhotos.com to catch those out. Uh, but I really want to thank 
uh, Vance, Vance and Sherry Levy for giving me the opportunity to cover Georgia football and Georgia football recruiting each and every day over on BulldogIllustrated.com. And not only does Georgia football, like I said, all sports are covered on there. Um, there's, you know, a great, great uh, conglomerate of people over there that are working. They get during football season, Jeff Dantzler gets involved. Um, they've got Kevin Butler involved over there. So it's a great, great place to catch everything Georgia Bulldogs going on at BulldogIllustrated.com. So you need to check it out. You can follow them at BD underscore Illustrated on Twitter at We Are Bulldogs on Instagram. So go check it out, BulldogIllustrated.com. Now we're going to get to our first clip here uh, from Von Lasseter as he discusses what it's like to be a high school head coach with these such high profile recruitments that go on. Yeah, I think the first thing is, you know, just understanding how blessed you are to be able to, to coach an athlete like that. Uh, you know, whenever – the thing that I've learned over the last few years is that, you know, that those guys coach – you know, the coaches at the different universities and those guys that are recruiting are, are professionals. And they really know what to look for. And they, they know uh, when you have a, a player like we've been fortunate to have at the last – you know, here in, in, in Houston County – um, they they understand what type of athlete you're you're looking at, and you're looking at guys that are potentially going to play in the NFL, which is you know the the top of the top when it comes to athletes. Again, that's Von Lasseter, the head coach of Jake Fromm, Trey Hill, and Amarius Mims in high school. Let's just talk for a second before we get into Georgia recruiting, because there's more clips on that that are going to be specific to Georgia. Let's talk about the perspective of Von Lasseter as a high school head coach realizing the talents that he has in front of him, realizing how rare those talents are and the foresight to know, okay, these college coaches, just like he has a career to do, he has a job to do as a high school head coach. They have a career, a job expertise at the college level that they rely on to put food on their table. So a lot of people – have this misconception that people are just, you know, throwing out these offers and, and sometimes, you know, players are getting overlooked, things of that nature. These guys know what they're looking for, uh, especially in the case of the University of Georgia. There's a select criteria of things that, that have to be met, including academic rigors, which I'll touch on in a minute. But just the foresight there of Von Lasher, no, hey, if somebody like Georgia, Alabama is recruiting, this this player is a potential NFL caliber player down the road. And having that in his mind as he gets going through to handle this recruitment, thought that was big. This the, And because it's big, there's a lot of responsibility that comes to that. This next clip from Coach Lasseter in the interview is going to touch on the responsibility of being a head coach of one of those athletes and everything that comes with it during these recruitments? Well, it's huge, you know, and you, you learn a little bit more along the way. Um, you know, when whenever I had Jake, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. And, and so you just kind of learn from that experience and you learn from, um, you know, just going through it. And then with Trey, we, you know, we kind of learned some things. And I met with, with Trey's brother and, and those, the people that were responsible for his recruiting and, and, and we met and we talked about things. And by the time I got to Amorius, I have uh, I have kind of a a list, an agenda that we sat I sat down with his parents. We went through right there at the very beginning, and kind of laid some things out, which I think is is very helpful for the parents too. But you know, it's a it's a big responsibility because it's not just about recruiting; it's about making sure that um, their their grades are good. You know, which we do for all players, not just our our kids that are getting recruited. But you have got to make sure they're they're getting signed up for tests you got to get make sure that they're keeping the gpa high enough to enroll in universities that are recruiting them um you know you can get caught co- co- you know calls from coaches at nine o'clock at night need something and you have to be you have to make yourself available for them because you know you you want to give the, the player that that god's entrusted you with every opportunity to reach all of his goals and if that goal is play to play division one football then and you got to make yourself available for that. You can't just say somebody else will do it because there's not. Interesting there that Coach Lasseter talked about not only managing 
things in terms of how the players are playing on the field. And keep in mind, this is uh, a high school head coach. They have families. Uh, they have, you know, often classroom responsibilities that they have to take care of, not to mention there's 60, 70 other players on the team that have to be have to be coached and, and loved on and cared for and all that kind of stuff. But you've got this high profile and uh, and even sometimes multiple high profile athletes Got to make sure their grades are right, make sure they're getting their test, all these kind of things. And that is one point that I want to bring up is not not many people often talk about. The University of Georgia is a very rigorous academic standard school. There are schools, even high profile and what many people would argue the most high profile SEC opponents that Georgia has to deal with, that do not have to deal with the same academic standards and issues of that nature that Georgia does. There is a reason every press conference that Kirby Smart has that relates anything to recruiting or whenever he talks about recruiting, the first thing that he says is you're going to get a world-class education at the University of Georgia. Because there are, when you talk about regular students just applying to Georgia, there's students that have... GPA is way on high up in the in the threes. I'm talking about 3.8, 3.9s that aren't getting accepted into the University of Georgia. Uh, test scores maybe aren't up to par, things of that, not enough extracurriculars, things of that nature. It's a very demanding academic school, not only to get into, but to stay in. Uh, the University of Georgia has to deal with these things where some schools do not. So kind of keep that in mind in terms of recruiting because there's some players the University of Georgia doesn't even look at because they know the grade situation. I know there's one, won't name names, but there's one five-star linebacker in this last cycle that the University of Georgia didn't even show any interest in because they knew because of behavior and because of grades it, it wouldn't even be feasible. To go after him. So kind of keep that in mind. And then finally, uh, finally we got two more clips. The next one I want to go through is a clip that where I asked Von Laster, how is Georgia different throughout the recruiting process? Is there something that makes them stand out that other programs don't do? Because Georgia has had unparalleled success for, for them and for many programs around the country under Kirby Smart and recruiting three number one classes uh, in in five years. I mean, it's a it's an unparalleled feat for many, like I said. So take a listen here as to what Von Laster, who was involved in, you know, high-profile recruitments, like I said, with Alabama. Jake Fromm was at one point committed to Alabama. Uh, Clemson, Auburn, a slew of other schools came after Marius Mim. Auburn was heavily involved with Trey Hill. So listen to what he says about how Georgia's approach is different than others. That Georgia does that, that I can say, you know, pretty much nobody other than Clemson, you know, uh, that Georgia is, Georgia still involves the head coach, you know, and, and Clemson does to a certain extent. And, and once we got down the road with Georgia, with these three guys, Clemson kind of understood they were going to go to Georgia and kind of backed off or whatever. But, um, Coach Caldwell at Clemson is, is unbelievable, and he still communicates. But but Georgia, they come through me. They don't go around me. They don't go around the school. They don't go to trainers. They don't go to anybody other than the head coach. They still hold what 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 we say and what we think about the player and, and how we, they communicate. They still go through the head coach. And I, I just have the utmost respect for that, you know, because sometimes that's probably not the easiest route, you know. I mean, they can go – to trainers or to, um, you know, position coaches or whatever. But but Coach Smart and, and his staff have always went through the high school and through the guidance department and through the head coach, and and, and nobody else does that. And, and it's been something that, that I've always just been so impressed with. If, if they needed something or needed to know something, they called me directly. They don't. They don't go around the, you know, around your back. Or they don't go to somebody else. They, if they don't get told what they want to get told from me, they don't try to find another answer. They just understand that is to be the truth. 
So I find that fascinating in an era where players, prospects have a ton of different people pulling them in a ton of different directions, trainers, family members, handlers, all these kind of things, recruiting gurus, all of this stuff. The University of Georgia deals directly with high school head coaches. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that Kirby Smart was the son of a high school football coach. Also, Kirby Smart paid his dues at a small college environment, not very much different from a high school in Valdosta State. So I think Kirby Smart appreciates the work that goes in to these high school coaches, the relationships that they have with their players. A lot of for a lot of players in in high school, myself included, a high school head coach is like a second dad. It's a very, very close bond. Of course, there's some people that butt heads and things like that. But if those guys that have the respect of these high-profile prospects are letting them know that University of Georgia deals with them in a very upfront, trustworthy manner, then that is undoubtedly being conveyed to the players, earning more even trust and admiration from those players and it's easy to see why that method has been successful for the University of Georgia but I think that the fact that Vaughn Lasseter who has been right there in all of these recruitments involving Alabama involving uh, Clemson as you mentioned Auburn Florida LSU all of these schools that have that have been around these recruitments and saying Georgia is really the only one that that kind of sticks to that method Felt that like that was very telling of Kirby Smart and his staff and how they go about recruiting. Then finally, this last clip that we're going to have talks about University of Georgia and their evaluations and feedback to the schools on the prospects they're recruiting. Another strong clip here from Von Lester that I think really shows what the University of Georgia's priorities are in recruiting. Really a appreciate you know especially like coach luke you know and, and coach Pittman too you know i've sent them videos of amarius and and you know send them videos of of trey and you know 99 percent of people would say you know that's great he's the best player in the world and you know blah 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 and, you know coach luke would say hey look we got a little bit too much weight forward and, and 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 you know maybe we can do this or do that he was always trying to help coach you know and and i think that that was you know, some things that, that really helped us, you know, um, because Amaris could line up against anybody and look really good. But Coach Luke understood that, you know, that we could be even better. He could be even better than he, than he is, you know, yesterday. Yeah. And so those were little things that helped us. And, and I think I've always gotten an honest evaluation from, from Coach Smart's staff. It's a nice insight there on Coach Luke. Uh, Matt Luke, why he's been so successful so far as a recruiter at the University of Georgia. Also, Sam Pittman, for that matter. Sam Pittman's knocking it out of the park recruiting for uh, Arkansas. Of course, he had a a way better year than expected um, at the University of Arkansas over there. Gave Georgia all they could handle in the first game. So, you can see that that element of just uh, being honest, being truthful, always coaching, something that people really admire and appreciate and now we're going to get into our final two segments here the first one is commitment watch each week we will talk to you about who is getting close to making commitments have there been commitments delayed Uh, what do new commitment projections look like all of those things and the first one coming up here kind of chronologically is malachi starks malachi starks the five star out of jefferson georgia a high priority i think other than maybe Gunnar Stockton in this class, Malachi Starks is the highest priority for the University of Georgia, a just must-have prospect living only 30 minutes from campus. Um, He will make his commitment on March 25th at 5.30 in Jefferson. Georgia really, really uh, wants him. They're very in tune with everything that's going on, Um, not only him but his family. Family is a huge thing to Malachi Starks, and I think – for that reason, Georgia has an advantage because uh, Malachi's family, big, big UGA fans. Um, also, Malachi, I think, knows that he's needed at Georgia. Uh, the secondary is a position of need going forward at the University of Georgia, whereas maybe at Alabama and Clemson, who are the other two in his top three, 
more so he would be be uh, a luxury, another guy in that in that rotation. But I think that Malachi Starks, if you had asked me today, I would say I'm going to put in my official prediction that he's going to end up at Georgia. Had two commitments postponed. Kristen Miller, Michael Williams, both huge defensive line prospects, in-state guys that Georgia's going after. Michael Williams, his commitment was scheduled for March 15th. Now that's being postponed. Kristen Miller, his was scheduled for April 4th. That one's being postponed as well. These guys are both in a tremendously strong relationship with the University of Georgia, Trey Scott, uh, Kirby Smart, all involved here. I don't think this has as much to do as reflective of kind of a, a change of heart because I had both of these guys leaning towards the University of Georgia as I think it does just wanting to do their due diligence, wanting to see things open up because of c- the COVID restrictions and getting around uh, to the, some of these different schools. Like Kristen Miller, for example, he dropped a top four of Georgia, Georgia Tech, Florida, and Indiana. But since then, Ohio State and in Southern Cal have come on, offered him what young man, you know, if these official visits are capable of happening again once these the restrictions are lit, what young man wouldn't want to go take that official visit and get that experience? So you can't blame him there. Uh, but Kristen Miller and Michael Williams, those postponement those commitments have been postponed to later dates. Now, of course, uh, May 7th, Emory Floyd, safety out of Hillgrove. He can really, really run. Uh, Georgia, like I said, needs depth going forward in that secondary. And I think Emory Floyd is someone who is a little bit of an underrated talent, someone who needs to develop a little bit more physically in terms of uh, size, things like that. But in terms of the speed, it is there. And little insight that I've got over the last couple years that Georgia, that's where everything starts with them. If you have speed, if you have instincts for the game, you play fast, not just run a fast time, but you play fast, Georgia is going to be very, very interested in you, and Emory Floyd is one of those guys. Again, he's committing on May 7th. Feel like he's just about as strong of a Georgia lock as there can be out there. Also, Kojo and Tui, a wide receiver out of Lambert High School in Cumming, Georgia, has ties to both Georgia, of course, being an in-state guy, and then Texas A&M uh, has family back in Texas. Ohio State's in the mix. He'll be committing on July 5th, which it happens to be his mother's birthday. And Kojo Antwi is one of those Georgia needs probably four receivers, maybe, maybe more in this class because there's going to be a lot of production leave Athens after this year. Uh, if George Pickens has the kind of year that everyone expects him to have, no doubt he'll be going pro. Kyrus Jackson will be going pro. Demetrius Robertson. You know, a lot of guys will be gone after this year at the wide receiver position. And Kojo Antwi is a guy that Todd Munkin honed in on right away when he got to the University of Georgia, was one of the first guys that he talked to in the class of 2022. And I think that – uh, Kojo is a player that reminds me a lot of a Malcolm Mitchell at this point in his game. Uh, per, potentially could end up being a, more explosive than Malcolm, but he's just a tremendous route runner. Uh, is able to do a lot of things once the ball is in his hands. You think about some of those plays that Malcolm Mitchell made against Florida where he created after the catch. Some great things, um, and really not a bad player to be compared to because Malcolm Mitchell you know, played in the NFL for several years, had a lot of success with the New England Patriots. So I think Kojo Antwi is a guy that Georgia desperately wants to kind of lead that wide receiver class um, in, the 20, in 2022. He's a teammate of Gunnar Stockton on Hustle, Inc. He also is a teammate of Oscar Delp, who's a huge – uh, target for the University of Georgia at the tight end position. So that is the final player here on our commitment watch, and that's all going all the way out to July 5th. And, again, that was our commitment watch. And now our last segment of the show is called Dog Bites. We will bring to you audio clips every week, Lord willing that we have them, when we talk to prospects, players, coaches, all these kind of stuff that are involved in these recruitments. And the two dog bites we're going to bring you this week are Toriano Pride and Isaiah Bond. Before we get to those, uh, of course, Toriano Pride, a 
four-star corner out of St. Louis, Missouri. And then, of course, Isaiah Bond, who is a world-class speed guy, especially at this point in his high school career and development out of Buford, Georgia. Going to get you uh, some quotes from them and kind of leave leave you with that at the end of this show. Just wanted to remind you guys, if you've enjoyed everything that you've heard today, if you like the show, please subscribe on the Bulldog Illustrated YouTube channel. If you're listening on YouTube, Apple Podcast, you can research just RBU on there. Subscribe, leave a review, do the same on Google Podcasts and Spotify. It's greatly appreciated. Now we're going to leave you with these last two dog bites from Toriano Pride out of St. Louis, Missouri and Isaiah Bond out of Buford, Georgia. And that'll be the the end of this show, episode two of the RBU podcast. And look forward to bringing you another episode next Monday. And uh, remember, there's only one podcast that centers solely around Georgia football recruiting, and this is it, your recruiting bulldog update, the RBU podcast. I'm Blaine Gilmer, and I hope you have a great week. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's real good. It's real good. Uh He's a, I talk to him a lot. He's a real laid back, cool, calm, and collected kind of guy. Uh, we built a really strong relationship, and I also I've always had a strong relationship with Coach um, Coach Landing. He's he's from Kansas, Missouri, so that's kind of close. And uh, yeah, we we I was on the phone with him earlier today, Coach Landing. So and it was just really good talking to them. Very physical, fast tempo and physical. That's that is probably the main thing I see out of Georgia defense. The DBs they they lock up and they got the linebackers. I mean the uh, the D line putting all pressure on them. Gives the DBs a great opportunity to make plays on the ball. Um, yes, sir. It was a he was a great he was a great guy talking to him. Um, I can tell. But away we was on the phone and have a great relationship with each other going further on. And basically the offer went, um, like you say, it's our speedster, playmaking ability and also uh, with a little bit of, with a little bit of length on me too. We probably went up around forty today. Um laser I probably around four or four or very low or four three, huh?